Hello and welcome to the Arizona Wildcats show. I'm Michael Lev. This is Zach Rosenblatt. We're with the Arizona Daily Star. We're here at Arizona Stadium where the Wildcats lost to Stanford 34 to 10. It's Arizona's fifth loss in a row. Uh, they're now two and six overall. 0-5 in the Pac-12. They need to win the rest of their games to qualify for a bowl game. Zach, let me ask you, what are the odds of that happening? Uh, slim and none. Uh, I mean, all the problems they've had all year were the same tonight. I mean, I don't, I don't think anything's changed. I mean, we thought maybe getting the quarterbacks back would help, but the quarterbacks were as bad as they've been since Richard has been a coach here, including when they had to play Matt Moore in a couple weeks ago. So. I, they're in dire straits right now, and I think if they can get another win in these last four games, it's an accomplishment, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, when you look at the schedule, you look at the way they've been yeah. playing, a best-case scenario might be to split those last two games. And the Territorial yeah. Cup is their bowl game. The Territorial Cup basically becomes their bowl game at that point. You mentioned quarterback play. I feel like that's kind of a new problem um, yeah. in that there's generally been pretty good quarterback play during all of Rich Rodriguez's years here. And tonight was one of the worst performances in recent memory. Five uh, for 20 th overall. Five I for think, 20, yeah. yep. Five for 20. Uh, Brandon Dawkins was five for 15. Mm -hmm. Anu Solomon was 0 for 3. The Khalil Tate came in at the end of the game and went 0 for 2. That all adds up to five for 20. It's not what we expect um, from an Arizona offense. They looked out of sync throughout the game. Brandon Dawkins, you know, not, I know he did not look like he did. No, he didn't. I, game, I mean, yeah. Stanford was in it's good position yeah. to defend the run and kind of took that away from him for the most part. He just wasn't um, having the lane. I mean, the offensive line, They even Jacob Alcidek admitted this, they just were not opening up lanes for Samaji Grana running back, which is an experiment anyway. And Rick Brandon Dawkins just was not having the lanes that he had. And even against Washington, he was considered one of the best defenses in the country. So, yeah, it's uh, it was weird, especially, you know, Anu Solomon. You know, everybody was kind of excited that he was, that he was at least back and capable of being the backup. And then he comes in and throws three completions, gets sacked and fumbles the ball. And then he's out of the game the rest of the game. So. Weirdly, the quarterback position seemed like it was in the best shape it's been all season, and maybe it's been just as bad as it's been all season. Yeah, it is just as bad. Uh, on the other side of the ball, um, not a terrible effort, I would say, by the defense. There were a handful of breakdowns, though. Yeah. Most of them involved Christian McCaffrey, who was kind of the focal point of the whole game. There was a 45-yard run. There was a, a pass play where he was inexplicably uncovered. There was a, a big run on a wildcat play. Um, Christian McCaffrey's going to get his regardless he is. of who you're yes. playing anyway. He but, is. Yeah. Um, and it was just that handful of breakdowns that they couldn't afford to have in a game where the offense really wasn't doing anything. And I feel like the Stanford team was ripe for the taking. Keller Christ wasn't very good. I mean, he completed 14 of 30 passes we, for we, 104 yards. We were wondering yards. why he didn't win the job out of camp, and we kind of saw why. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we did see why. Um, and it's really disappointing, I think, that they weren't able to take advantage of that. Yeah, they were hitting him a lot, and they were getting a good pass rush. Uh, but, yeah, I mean... I, it was kind of ironic that, you know, they've talked about how they're trying to force all these turnovers. Dang Cruikshank gets an interception and immediately fumbles it right back to Stanford. So that's kind of exemplified what Arizona's going through. That right was now. a total Murphy's Law situation. What can go if they, wrong? If they, does got, go if they wrong, had gotten man. that, it was towards the end of halftime. If they could have cut, cut the game, it would have been close going into the locker room. I mean, that, plays like that throughout the season, they just haven't converted them. Whereas two years ago, they got all those plays. So it's just week to week, it's kind of the same thing, the same story. It, we seem to have to be talking about the same issues every time we come out here. We do. Um, talking to Rich Rodriguez and some of the players afterward, you got the sense that they still care. They're going to still try. They're going to play for pride or whatever it is, um, that it, whatever goals are remaining this season. He talked a lot about everyone kind of buying in. Uh, Jacob Alcidek described a scene in the locker room where players are crying. So I think they still care. Um, they're just in a down cycle right now. They don't have the players. They don't have the depth that they need to compete. I think it's safe to say at this point, Zach, that this is a rebuilding season. Yeah, and there was it was a big recruiting weekend too. They had a lot of guys here. Braxton Burmeister, who is going to add an interesting fold to the quarterback position next year. Uh, Rich Rod has pointed to 2017. Anytime there's been struggles, anytime there's been questions, and so we're going to find out next year if what he's been talking about really comes to fruition. Unfortunately, we there's have to still wait till next year. Yeah, there's <laughs> still four games to play this year. We'll see how those go. Anyway, that's our show for tonight. You can check out Zach's work and my work at Tucson.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Happy Halloween.